Hello people of God, this is Sarah Beveridge and I wanted to come to you today and share a couple dreams that I've had that I believe are significant and they are involving how technology is going to play a role in implementing the beast system that is being set up right now by the kingdom of darkness that God is allowing in order to fulfill the end time prophecies. So basically you know the Lord has been dealing with me about technology quite a bit and I, I wrote a chapter in my book Reclaiming My Wasteland about how evil has penetrated into um, mass media and technology and that's what Satan is using he's the prince of the power of the air I mean this shouldn't be a surprise to us but the Lord has given some more details to me about what he's actually doing specifics okay so the first dream is about um, the, you know, where you can go online to credit reporting company. It's actually not a credit reporting company. The one company I'm speaking of is called Credit Karma. That's the name of it. And you can get your credit scar score for free, supposedly. Uh, well, I wanted to find out what my credit score was because I really wanted to get a new car. Uh, which the Lord has kind of nixed that idea for a while. So, um, so I went online. I didn't ask, and I, because I'd had a bankruptcy that's not quite ten years old yet. Once that comes off, it should improve greatly. But my credit score with this Credit Karma was six six six. Now, that's not really <laughs> the issue of being a bad credit. The issue is the Lord was speaking to me through it. Because in this other dream, this dream I had about it, the Lord is showing me how these companies and Credit Karma, one of them, is using it to collect people's data in order to misuse it. Okay, they're compiling databases of people. So in this dream, I, I'm in a kitchen and a man is telling people that he's going to explain and tell them their credit score but first they need to give a thumbprint okay they need to give their okay in other words and their um, private data and then the people first you know it, and this is what's the interesting part of the dream because you know dreams are symbolic you know the Lord uses symbolic language they stick their thumb in butter which is meant to be smooth meaning smooth talking and then in cinnamon which means you know something that smells good so this is going to be something that is going to sound like a good thing well it sure did sound like a good thing to me to get my credit score for free which with the credit reporting agencies they want you to sign up and pay money and all this stuff and so um when doing that then you had to like press down on a sheet of paper and then the man would talk about their score Okay, so that was the dream. And so what the Lord was showing me is that this has something to do with the lead up to the mark of the beast. Uh, butter represents something that is smooth, like a smooth talker that comes from Psalm 5521, a deceiver, deceptive. The people will be smooth talked to give up their personal data. Okay, the thumbprint. Cinnamon smells good. And it's an alluring fragrance. So I think that that speaks, again, of something that looks like it's a good thing but it's a trap so if any of you have are on credit karma get off of it right now I'm serious <laughs> you might want to consider it and uh, if you if you're not on it if you're thinking about trying to find out what your credit score is um, don't do it through credit karma okay God is speaking very clearly to me when I saw that 666 that it was um, it's a trap it's demonic it's capturing personal data and information and that is only going to continue and escalate I mean look what's going on on Facebook you guys I don't know if you're following that uh, but look it up okay then the other dream I had I titled this dream meet Julius okay so um, I'm just gonna read what I wrote in my journal about this it's kinda the easiest way to explain it um, but basically I had two dream scenes where the Lord was showing me that the development of a new sort of life after Google and Facebook uh, kind of internet is not going to be what people believe 
Uh, I read an article yesterday, this was back in September, September 30th is when I made this journal entry, about the development of a new internet that would allow people to own and control their own data. Well, that sounds like a good thing, right? Well, no, it's not, because there's going to be a catch to it. Okay, so it seems like a good idea uh, because of how Google and Facebook collect our data and use it to market and sell to us and even sell their data. And the data is also used as a weapon. You know, countries are taking this data. They're using Facebook as a weapon. Uh, that's how Mark Zuckerberg became so rich. You know, he didn't get rich selling ads on Facebook. He got rich selling data, people's data. Um, so right after I wrote, woke up from the dream and was asking the Holy Spirit about this, I saw a vision of an orange that was being peeled. And the inside of it was black. So on the outside, this thing will look good and seem to be the answer, but it is evil. So I think um, it's interesting that you will notice in the news, if you follow the news at all, um, I basically just follow the news headlines because <laughs> I don't have time to do much more than that. Um, and I don't want to. I mean, I, as long as I can just get sort of a peripheral view of things, that's all I need. And then the Holy Spirit informs me from there. But there is a lot of backlash now happening with Google and Facebook and these other uh, social um, media platforms. They are really being, you know, the government is coming against them for antitrust and all kinds of other things. And they are going to be demonized heavily. And then what's going to happen is this other Internet that's being developed, which I'll put a link to the article in the description box that, I, that I'm referring to. When I, when I speak about this, uh, this other internet that's being developed is going to sound like a really good thing, but it's going to be this orange is what the Lord was saying. It's going to look good, but when you peel it back, it's black. It's evil, okay? Because this is what Satan has to do. He comes as an angel of light. He's got to make it look good, okay? And this is where we need to hear the voice of the Lord, and we need to have discernment. We need the the gift of discerning of spirits and i highly recommend that you pray for that gift because it says in first corinthians chapter 12 that we're to seek after the gifts of the spirit and that is a very important gift and i operate in that spirit and i mean in that um gift of discerning of spirits that gift and the lord is really teaching me how to use it and how to harness it because all these years i've been experiencing things that were a, a, a repercussion of the gift and i didn't know what the world was going on so now i understand it more and i've been learning a lot more about that gift which hopefully in the future as i get more uh, solidly in the word and on my feet about it i can teach on it and, and share what i've gone through with it Okay, so let me share this dream, Meet Julius. Uh, actually, it's two dream scenes. So the first dream scene starts out with a professor. Now remember, dreams are symbolic. They are symbolic language. So this is why the Bible says that dream interpretation belongs to God, because he's got to inform you by the power of the Spirit what the symbology means. Okay, so bear with me on this. So it starts out with a professor who is my cousin Kim's teacher. Now, my cousin Kim, of course, she represents the church. She represents church family, people of God. I saw his hands, and he had red nail polish on his fingernails. I thought that was weird. I still don't have a full revelation of what that means. If you get something on that by the Spirit, let me know in the comments. He was taking pieces of paper and speaking the data into what looked like a phone. So he was, you know, taking the piece of paper, reading it, speaking the, the data on the paper into the phone. And he said the names of a few women, and I recall the name Stephanie. And Stephanie means that which surrounds. So keep that in mind. The scene then shifts, and this is the second part, and I see a woman is wearing a headset inside of a machine type thing. The professor decides to go see her, and I recall that she was a sex slave since a baby. The man is inside this huge craft in the sky that has a light on the front of it, 
It's as if it knows the man got in and is now moving around to watch and make sure he does not leave. I never saw him leave. I never saw him leave and the scene shifts and I'm having another dream where Kenny Reeves is there. It's like he is now inside this thing. It's kind of like I'm having a dream within a dream. It's really strange. And he is inside this thing that I that was in the sky. And this reminds me of the movie The Matrix. This is why I believe Kenny Reeves is, is in this dream. And I see him do some things that I can't explain because this part is vague. But he walks very strange and there are all these weird little creatures that are at his feet. And the scene changes and now I hear the introduction to this system and the man says meet Julius and I see a flash of a the giant machine in the sky and I know that this is Julius okay and I don't know if you can see this I'm going to try to show you my drawing but this is what it looked like okay can you see it the lights had rivets all over it windows all over it, the machine in the sky. Now, I believe that this is symbolic. I don't think this is literal. I believe that the Lord is speaking about a principle here that this is this machine is talking about uh, a system is what I believe. So the name Julius means Jupiter or Father. Jupiter was the supreme Roman god as Zeus was the Greek version. Jupiter was a sky god, also known as the light bringer. Doesn't that sound familiar? Julius Caesar, the emperor of Rome, was named after Jupiter. Okay, he was, Julius Caesar was, uh, you know, an emperor of Rome. These so called gods are really principalities and powers of the kingdom of darkness. They are working with men to develop a new kind of internet based on blockchain. If you know anything about that technology, it will appear to be a good thing. And the answer to the current system of giant technology companies who dominate the net. But in reality, this new system will be worse. Just like the Lord showed me, you know, the, the orange, it's not good. The black inside. And you won't be able to leave it once you sign on to it. You, it'll be very difficult to leave. This is what the Lord was showing me. The woman, Stephanie, who was a sex slave since a baby, also is portraying how hard it is to leave. Once you are a slave, it's hard to break free without the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. This new technology will be pervasive. That which surrounds, that's what the meaning of the name Stephanie is. Okay, and so as I was praying in the spirit about this, I heard the Holy Spirit. He said the word surreptitious. Okay, surreptitious. I had to look it up. I didn't really know what it meant. And it means kept secret because it would not be approved of. Stealthy, sneaky, sly, covert, veiled, black, like the black orange, concealed, hidden. So this whole thing is surreptitious. So there he goes, you, you guys. I, um, I'm not going to go any further than that. That's what I was shown. I'm just sharing what I've shown. We only know in part. I'm only revealing what I know right now in part. As more information comes out, as the Lord um, speaks to me about these things, I will make more videos and talk to you more about it. Um, you know, we're in the end times, guys. We're in the birth pangs. Things are not going to get better. And I believe that, you know, a lot of people who believe that Donald Trump is like some sort of savior and everything's going to get great. That's that's just not going to happen. It's, you know, it's going to be bearable so that we can get some work done. But the main purpose, I believe, with all my heart of Donald Trump coming in was to abolish Roe versus Wade in our nation so that we can start to fulfill the destiny that God has for us. And once Roe versus Wade is um, overturned, it will go back to the states, and then the fight is really going to begin. It is not going to be easy. 
we're going to be we're going to end up in a civil war in this nation things are going to get very ugly so this is where you have got to get close with the lord you've got to seek him with all your heart and find him and stay hidden under the shadow of his wings and hear his voice to the point where you do exactly everything he tells you and when he told me to be moved uh, by on October 1st I moved on October 1st and believe me it took it was a struggle because I didn't want to do it but then he dealt with me on that and I've really come to realize we have got to obey everything the Lord says to do exactly when he tells us okay you guys I love you all I'm praying for the body of Christ as I always do as an intercessor I pray as the Lord leads me please pray for me Pray for me in regards to um, the things that the Lord has me doing. You know, it's on the Father's heart right now. This whole human trafficking and sex trafficking nightmare. It's a horrible, disgusting scourge on our society. And it's gotten really bad in the United States. And the, the Father is dealing with it, okay? And he's using his people to help restore some of these young women, especially the young girls, minors. It's a horrible thing what's happening to them. So... Pray for me in regards to that. Pray for my health. Pray, Lord, you know, that the Lord will just lead me in what to do and when to do it and where to go because there's a lot. There's just a lot on my plate right now, and um, I'm just trying to obey the Lord, okay? So God bless you all, and have a wonderful day in the Lord. Amen.